Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Bros with Brains here at number 14. How we haven't been cancelled, I'll never know, but thank you for the love. <laughs> here with my boy, Mr. Ben Mayfield, as always. How are you, sir? How are we doing, guys? Um, I'm, I'm very good. I'm very good. Um, I'm very good. That's just there. Yeah, we'll leave it that. I'm very good. Um, You're not as good as me in a single right now. You want yeah, to I, mean, I mean, I, I didn't even remember. I didn't, know, I didn't, I didn't realize we we're doing the singular thing. But and I'm um, not wearing any pants either, just in case you're wondering. I wish I was wearing panties, but you know we're gonna make do. <laughs> 27 degrees here in Melbourne. It's fucking naked weather. Let's go. I'm a bit of a lingerie kind of man, so I mean, if there's some nice black lace under there, I'll be happy. But you know what? I'll pull out my my leopard print. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, no, time. I um. Uh, something, something, something. I think it'd be worth diving into for everyone. Um, what's the word? I I attempted something and I failed, and it uh, okay. Fail's a wrong word. I realize I've been a bit uh, what's the word illogical on myself, but um, I I went to I went to take on a, a casual job, um, a bit more physical than I'm used to, just in terms of having like some a bit of extra security for for like finances and stuff while the business takes off. Um, that was all it was going to be. Nothing, nothing full time or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I went to my first day yesterday and pretty much had to quit. Um, I, after seven, eight and a half years now, since my car accident and sort of had all my diagnoses and my treatments, that sort of shit. Um, yeah, I thought just being typical, arrogant douchebag that, uh, you know, doctors are wrong and I, <laughs> I decide my fate in my life and, um, yeah, I got through half a day's work and was pretty much in excruciating, agonizing pain to the point I couldn't move when I got home and was kind of like, well, if that was only half a shift, I can't probably say I could do a full shift. And yeah, so kind of probably a safe bet, but I mean, hopefully it's nothing too serious. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the. It wasn't the job per se. It's just a just a chronic diagnosis of everything. Like it's the job was literally everything the doctors told me not to do. Um, in the sense of like you know the the low bearing rotation over prolonged periods of time, t- types of flooring to be on and that sort of shit. Like all the stuff that. I probably should listen to, and I just thought, you know, after this long, it's, it's fine. You know, I'm I'm better than one a doctor, and doc- things are fine. Yeah, one of those things doctors know best. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those ones where I don't like being told no, and I like to control what I can. And this was one of those things. It was very humbling because it's such a simple, like it's such a simple job, like very, very simple in, in the thought process, in the process, the everything else. And yeah, for me, it was just like this will be easy, like just to make some safe money and stuff, just to have on the side. Wrong. Yeah. I, well, it's always nice to have some sort of financial security, though, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that was that was kind of the point, just to make sure I had that, and then, then yeah, kind of just getting sort of put back in my place. Like, yeah, just because it's been a few years and you can lift some big numbers doesn't mean that you're still not fucking human and the body's fragile and a piece of shit. Nah, fuck that. Take it, take it to breaking point, and then break it and keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do I progressive overload this? How do I just fail at this job? <laughs> Just drop it. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is you're carrying, drop it. You that's it. You failed and won. Worked all at the a same complete time. failure. Yeah. That's um, it. But yeah, no, that was just that was just a it, it just reinforced everything that I'd I'd sort of forgotten or or got over, I guess. Um not having done that type of work for a long time was just it kind of just brought it all back and it sort of put me in my place for a minute about, you know, feeling rather rather useless and and uh I guess put in check about just how serious back injuries really are when it, when it comes to that sort of shit. So it was humbling, but at the same time, like I just move forward with matter and focus on here and make sure that I give everyone the best they can. So I don't go losing clients and people are happy and getting results. Yeah. No, fair. Can't really uh, question or, you know, go against that, I guess. <laughs> tis, tis, tis all, <laughs> hey, full of shit. Hey, Your back's fine. Like, Got to work. Yeah. Pretty much. Like, where can I say, I mean, have you tried using a belt or a waist trainer to help you? Oh yeah, I definitely had a um, a uh, what's the word? Uh, fuck, damn it! I had a course set on, obviously. 100%. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're gonna do it, do it properly. Otherwise, don't bother doing it, right? Yeah, I just I just want to get my um my my uh my hourglass figure and keep my back supported. You know, just optimize yeah, both. Two two birds, one stone. <laughs> well, two girls, one cup. <laughs> and cancel. Uh, I have um, not watched that. I have never watched that. I don't know what you're talking about. That was a pretty shit joke. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll see who has watched that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say how many people will get that. <laughs> um, um, anyway, I was gonna say besides, oh, how's the back pulled up now? Anyway, um, yeah, I had a pretty um. Well, I mean, I'm usually someone. I'm usually up at you know seven o'clock on the dot. I get my seven hours. I'm up, get my day started, get to work, get to training, whatever it is. And I was slept through like seventeen alarms. I woke up at nine o'clock and I was like stiff and sore. And I was like. 
okay, it's about this point I realize it's probably not going to be a, a, a fruitful job. <laughs> it's probably not something that's going to pan out. So have you con- um, have you sort of worked out or got plans in place or an idea in place uh, what you're going to do next then, I guess? Hey, just keep trotting along with matter. Focus on people, focus on clients and results and take the plunge. That's it. Yep, no, that's fair. I mean, why not just go all in, balls to the wall, so to speak? Literally, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, uh, well, I am someone that doubts my own abilities, but I, I, I am of the assumption that when the right intentions are mixed with the right work ethic and the, the right knowledge uh, applied correctly, um, and people notice the care and people notice the, more so than the the financial side, they notice the um, the intent to help. And I mean, if I can't do any more than that, I can't do any more than that. If that's not yeah, what people want, then I'm in the wrong thought, game. Who would have thought being a client-centric actually made money? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean caring about your clients and actually making sure they get what they are, they are paying you for is is um, a good business model? Yeah, that'd be stupid. you got to systemize it and you got to create plans that you can send out and that's it. Ten and different plans, all under different mm-hmm. uh, funnel marketing programs. And yeah, every, just, every, everything's an ebook, but it's just ebook after ebook. I mean, that's it. You just release them weekly just because, you know, <laughs> they, there's like no real content in them. Like, so do my five dollar, do my five dollar chess program, um, and a thousand of you buy those a week, and we'll be sweet. Yeah, it's pretty much what Kai Green does. <laughs> I'm saying that though, he's got like two million followers, and they pay two bucks. It's like, oh, he's set for a while. So <laughs> <laughs> the one he did about the one he did about being vegan, as he also had like when he was with Muscle Meds and had the carnival protein, <laughs> that made yeah, yeah. me laugh. Oh god, that was good. Yeah, 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 it was the most ironic thing that he probably could have done, and he's done some fucking weird shit. Like, <laughs> You're like, uh, that's up there. You're like, bro, where did you, yeah. how'd you fuck that up? <laughs> yeah, that's me, mate. That's me. Um, yeah, I still, still got into the gym today and just did what I could and that sort of shit. But yeah, it's, um, it's all happening. It's maxed out on a leg extension. Yeah, pretty much. Why not? Got some nice cheeky pumps in. Yeah, quads, gains. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Busy, tired, fucking shit keep going on in this house that I've moved into and one thing after another real estate agents can't do their jobs and sorry guys if there are any listeners that are real estate agents and you think you can do your job you can't just get over it <laughs> Kidding, I swear it's just our real estate agents are a pain in the ass it's just like bruh do your job yeah move in the house is meant to be you know somewhat clean it wasn't gardens uh-huh. are meant to be somewhat tended they weren't like electricity wasn't working properly so uh-huh. plumbing wasn't done properly it's like how does a house look this nice and have this many fuck ups? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, how? 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 Anyway, so, but I've got more shit going on. We've got fucking seeing cleaner coming tomorrow. I've been painters coming today, freaking electrician and plumber we here the other day. Like, fuck, it's just one thing after another. So, hey, but I saw your, is ass. I saw your, um, saw your announcement yesterday, Arvo. Things are moving along quite well. Oh, yeah. I, it's, nice and full. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I I've been full for a little bit, to be honest, but um, I keep getting inquiries. So I just thought, you know what, as uh, I don't want to try and sound arrogant. It's kind of like, guys, I appreciate the love, but yeah, I'm full. <laughs> Sorry. So, I mean, I can, you can sign up to my wait list and, you know, when a spot does open up, you will give you contact. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have other options that I always try and push. Like if you're self-sufficient, it's just like, you can just do monthly consults with me. It's cheaper for you as well. Like, yeah. Just do, you know, once off monthly consult, you get 60 minutes with me. It's just like, We'll run through your program. We'll run through, you know, you write your own program and stuff like that. And I'll just overlook it. If you want me to write it and all that sort of shit, obviously it's going to cost a little bit more, but I'll give you an yeah, idea sure. and guide you in that 60 minutes, you know, you know, supplementation, nutrition, training, life. 10 mil a week. Don't question it. Just do it. Every time you fail a rep, you add another mil. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> you know, it's just what we do. Trend bologna um, sandwiches for breakfast, lunch, and tea. Pretty much. It's just trend only cycles. <laughs> <laughs> just, we, we laugh, but that's real. Yeah, we just start off at 10 milligram. Of, <laughs> sorry, 10 milligram, 10 grams a week of trend, and we just titrate up. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Guys, please don't do that. It's a complete fucking joke, yeah? God, <laughs> do not do that. For yeah, the love of God. Just do it with test and start at a gram. I'm joking. Don't everyone, that. everyone that listened, do not do not cut out at that point. Keep listening to the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah. We're telling it's you like not he, to do it. He's the drug guy and he said it. So I'm gonna go do it. Okay. Yeah. Stops at that point in the conversation, doesn't listen to the it's a joke part. It's like Deadpool, you know, when he's speaking to the, the pinder in the car <laughs> in, the, in the taxi, and he's like, <laughs> says one thing and then he whispers another thing. <laughs> it's like, don't do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, man, sure that I mean things are good, training's good. 
can't really complain. Dieting sucks, but you know, getting results <laughs> makes posing a lot easier. That's for sure. It does. Posing with our food ego <laughs> helps a lot. Yeah, it really helps when you're trying to pull a vacuum. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. Trying to pull a vacuum when you've got like half a day's worth of food in your guts, and you try not to shit yourself. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. go too well. Yeah, so I mean that makes things a bit interesting. Um, what else has been going on? There was something else. I can't remember. It's been a long fucking week already. It's only bloody Wednesday. <laughs> I can tell me about it. <laughs> well, the thing is, things opened up here in Melbourne now. So um, that was the other thing. It's like gyms finally open up like officially to everybody, not just athletes, on Friday at like six p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, so there'll be five p.m. more time. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, everyone's sort of getting excited for that because I think that hits about 80% double vax rate or some shit. And then, but currently now, like, we can actually go sit in a cafe, believe it or not, and sit in a restaurant. Like, you have to book and all that sort of shit. But things are slowly starting to open. But retail and all that now opens next week as well. Mm-hmm. So, that's, that's interesting. So, things are sort of starting to come back. And, you know, when the sun's get a bit better, we had 27 degree day today. We've got like 25 and 27 degree day next week. So, mm-hmm. slowly but surely, yeah, things are looking up. But there are a few interesting things happening at the higher levels of government that we probably should not discuss. <laughs> just yeah, people people who listen will know, especially if you're from Vic, like all the bullshit that's happening with the state government. It's just a pain in the ass. So everyone's just like, oh, how? Basic rundown: the dude is trying to basically give himself emergency powers at will. So everything that he can do with emergency powers, he can simply do without them because they're now a law. So he's trying to pass legislation to say that um, if he wants to lock down the state, he can without having with, without being an emergency power so he you know he won't have to go through the cross bench and all that sort of shit so is there enough conspiracy theorists out there without this guy making no, like, it like yeah like this is this is genuinely what he's he's actually doing like it's, it's gone to parliament today i think so uh yeah like it, it's officially like he's actually officially attempting to do this <laughs> Fuck no. like it's not, this one's not a conspiracy theory he's actually and people were talking about it like three months ago four months ago like this is what's going to happen and people were kind of like it like but there's no way that's going to happen that's so far-fetched that's like crazily crazy hitler style fucking regime like you know control everyone control everyone. but basically china and north korea combined so and then people are like there's no chance and then all of a sudden oh look by the way <laughs> this is what he's doing. It's just like, for fuck's sake. If, like, if it gets in, like, it's just, you're going to have much, many, many more people leaving uh, Victoria and heading up to New South and, you know, Queensland and shit. Oh, especially once the water's open. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. um, if that, if, as soon as they open and he's trying, if they're trying to do that, I mean, yeah, fucking come on up because <laughs> it's not happening up here. Well, yeah, right. It's just, that's the whole reason why. And then there was a stat that had come out that how many people have left Victoria, like, I think they said if officially it was like 7,000 or 8,000 had relocated or something along those lines. I feel like it's a ton more than that, though. Sounds like um, Victoria's version of good old Sir Joe. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucked. Not going to lie. But on the plus side, things are open. So yes, let's try and look at the positives. Yes, we digress. Um, yes. I guess something, something to talk on there, too, is... Um, wasn't what we we're going to talk about today, but I mean, something to dive on there is something I've seen a lot of people, um, especially even experienced athletes I've seen uh, doing it, especially even if you have or haven't had a home gym, rushing back into training and pushing out volume and loads as if you've been training the entire time, as if Melbourne hasn't been a lockdown, fucking take your time. There is literally a correlation between the risk of injury and how aggressively you return to training after a, like a prolonged period of time off. Just just take your time. You've been off for fucking 18 months, fucking whatever it is, or six months, 12 months, whatever was the last time you trained. Fucking ease into it. Yeah, remember, guys, like we had the volume versus effort or intensity discussion. We know that effort is really more so going to dictate the amount of skeletal mass, skeletal muscle mass that you accrue. So in theory, you should just do one RMs. <laughs> Ben's like, oh, he's going to drop something really good. Yeah, 100%. Go one RM first session and tell you shit. Do it. It's fucking yeah, ASC do it. approved. <laughs> if you think having six months off sucked and then you go back into one session and you try to do those things and end up with a fucking tear or a rupture and you end up with another three months off, probably not the best place to be. So, I mean, just, just be smart. Just be like, by all means, going with an intensity level, but at the same time, you're not the same person you were six months, 12 months, 18 months ago when life was normal and you had every other machine under the sun to train with and you've been training at home with kettlebells and fucking bands for 12 months. Yeah, so 100%. maybe, maybe just, uh, yeah, if you, if you haven't, 
got a program or a plan to get back into the gym and your your logic is just go in and absolutely belt yourself, maybe reach out, hit us up for well, coaching, programming, a con- fucking consultation to see, hey, this is what I was thinking about doing. So we can logically on the other side of the fence tell you to put your head in and not hurt yourself. Yeah. Probably tell, call Ben, don't call me because I'll probably tell you to one room just to be honest. <laughs> just be fun. It just be, you know why? I feel like a lot of people will probably deserve it only because it's our like 18th lockdown. So it's like, if you haven't figured that shit out by now, like you deserve to tell your shit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're placing a lot of stuff. And, and if you haven't accrued any gym equipment yet, especially if you are training like as a powerlifter, bodybuilder, whatever, and by the seventh lockdown, you have got zero gym equipment, you done fucked up somewhere down the line. so it's like you're either training in a gym already with like good on you or you're just lazy so if your if your uber eats account is higher than the expense of what it would cost to have gym equipment that's on you two to three hundred bucks on fucking you know uber eats a week but you couldn't buy those adjustable dumbbells or buy some kettlebells or buy a bench you know you know i I do like a form of like a little side business i just buy gym equipment that i find and resell it like i you could have just asked me i would have given you Great prices. I just found, honestly, you know what I just found? I found five Nitro, uh, five um, Nautilus Evo series pieces of equipment. I just bought. Cool. Like, I don't think people understand what they're selling, so it's great for me because I just bought them for a thousand bucks each. I'm like, this is mad. I'm going to go sell them for like triple the price. <laughs> <laughs> I've got buyers ready to line up for them, so whatever. Brilliant. Hey, I mean, hey, prep, uh, what's the word? Preparation, right? Well, it's just knowing your market. Yeah. But I mean, I guess it's a, it's a good, it's a good, uh, what's the word, um, segue into what we're going to talk about, which is along the lines of more of like priority schedules, routines, being structured in your life when thing, when you have goals and plans and stuff like that. Like if your priority was to train, if your priority was regardless of, uh, you know, what, what, what was going on in Melbourne or Victoria or Queensland or New South Wales or the rest of the country, wherever you are listening, if you were not, structured and planned on the things that you could control yet your goal is to maintain some form of hypertrophy or like progressive overload or you want to focus on training still or you know you you realize that this was going to happen and we didn't get to a point where you had that equipment i mean it comes down to you and it comes down to your priorities especially after what twenty one thousand times now you guys have been locked down um yes i understand finances are sort of jazz but again this is one of those times where it really separates. And I hate this idea that like, you know, very people very easily or very quickly start to make uh, external dispositions about like someone's luck or someone's ability to uh, get handouts or they were lucky and things were handed to them and stuff like that. But you don't see is that this person gave up, you know, extra shoes or, you know, eating out all the time or takeaways or like Netflix and stuff like that to save the money to buy gym equipment that gets them the result that they wanted so they could sustain training during COVID or during a lockdown or during isolation. It's just that degree of the actions you're taking and the intensity of the goal you have, do they align with the like the priorities that you're making essential? Yeah, exactly right. And it's a lot of the times people aren't willing or wanting to make the sacrifice that's potentially needed to better their health. And it's really funny. There was, um, I think it was a survey. I'm trying to think how long it was a while ago now. I don't quote me this. I can't remember where I saw it. I did read it. I just can't remember where I saw it. <laughs> um, the the survey nice. was well. What was the the first thing that people will cut out of a budget first and foremost? Mm-hmm. Um, when, when it comes to obviously organizing their finances and things like that, and the first thing that they cut out is health. Yeah. So whether that's you know whether they're getting treatments and stuff like that let's say you know chiro physio osteo massage whatever they cut that out whether they have a pt or a coach of some sorts they cut that out yep you know it's like why <laughs> it's like you are your single best investment so yep in theory you'd be almost doubling down on yourself <laughs> and wanting to cut cut out everything else because at the mm-hmm. end of the day, if you don't function well you can't do anything anyway so what's the point it's like the, my favorite quote is from broderick um for those that don't know broderick Tyler is the uh, evil genius he, uh, quote, aggressively quote, smart man about drugs yeah i love that's why i love him <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it doesn't care along, just do it yeah we get along famously it's great you'll just stay and take it all sides where do you think i get it from um <laughs> it, 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 his best quote is just uh, death is really bad for performance so <laughs> 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 it's like i can't, I can't really argue his, the grave yeah can't really argue his point in that look after yourself first so that you can actually enjoy things and do things for yourself later like otherwise later doesn't happen yeah, is that like 
putting off that point, like putting off all of these services for yourself. But like, I think if I recall similar, um, similar studies or evidence we went through in exercise psych, things like takeaways and alcohols were the last things to go. Bars are the last things to shut down because it's such a taxable service and it's an easily profitable service, even during a thing like a, a pandemic, because people are going to spend that money. But then they want to argue about like, you know, my health is a priority or like I'm concerned about getting sick as they're drinking themselves away or like, you know, just, Oh, I'm on the couch. So there's no point eating right. I may as well have a whole packet of Oreos and Tim Tams as they're already 25% body fat. Now I don't care about like having Oreos and Tim Tams, but if you're not calorie tracking them or you're in a position where you probably should be having them instead of having like, you know, some more nutrients, micronutrients, veggies, fiber, protein, then it kind of goes against what you're actually saying your priority is. Um, but yeah, it it's strange to me that we're so vocal about the things we want, but yet as soon as it comes, uh, I guess, not feasible or not as simple as we want it to be, just throw in the towel. We're kind of just like, let's just make conflicting or or uh, what's the word? We have that that term. Um, oh, God damn it. Um, it's where you know the, that's the term. Cognitive dissonance. Cognitive business. We generally know, we generally know, like, especially if you've been paying for a coach for a while that's teaching you, generally, you know how to prioritize and make things important and makes like structure things and set things up so that you get the best chance to win. And if you haven't got a coach teaching that, well, then, I mean, you've probably got a pretty shit coach. Let's be real. But generally, like those are things that happen and we get to a point where it's like, right, you know, you're pretty well sustainable on your own, but at the same time, like you still have that coach around you to support you and push you and like program and help you make best decisions. But if the first thing that goes out the window is your health, like, I mean, you just got to think, is is the goal you're setting out to want, the saying that you want, actually the goal you want and the priority that you have because your actions are dictating otherwise? It's really it's really quite that simple. Um, yeah, things come up and things get in the way. Um, I've, I've written about it many times and I've put blogs out about it. It's part of one of my eBooks is that, yeah, there's things we can't control, but I mean, what's the point of getting stressed up about that? Focus on the things you can control, which is, do I need to eat this food? do I need to have this uh, fucking Uber Eats account on my phone? Do I need to have this many streaming services on my phone? Do I need to have this many like PSN and all these different games whilst also I'm not buying any extra equipment or buying any extra, uh, like what's the word coaching services or, uh, you know, sticking to my meal plan and getting the foods I should be eating. Like if those things are weighing up, like where are your actual priorities and what are you actually committed to? Yeah. And I guess the flip side to that is if you are still happy to continue down that route and not invest in yourself and don't complain. I guess if you're happy to do that and just, you know, be who you are and whatnot, not want to look after your health in a better fashion. And if you think that your health is in a good state, then, you know, by all means go do you. But if you're aware and, you know, knowing that your health isn't in the best state, but you can't seem to get out of your own way and you haven't even tried to like start reaching out to the people that can potentially help you and put you on the right path or, you know, try help you get to the right path um, because, that's also, I think, something that, that happens a lot where people are like, oh, I want to do this. And then they start trying it and they're like, oh, it's a bit too hard. I'm happy where I am. And it's kind of like, well, like, are you or not? Because if you are, then cool. Just don't complain that you're unhealthy and all that sort of shit. Because if you're going to complain about it, I'm just going to tell you to shut up and do something about it. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're willing to try something and it doesn't work out, it's not that every other option is wrong or that, you know, you don't have to, I know there's this big push on acceptance and things have to be the way they are and all that sort of jazz and, you know, it's wrong to want to change and improve. Fuck that. If you actually believe that you want something and yeah, the first point is going to be pretty hard, especially when it comes to drastic lifestyle changes. It's why we don't make massive lifestyle changes in one go. It's a progressive system of making improvements and changes over time. Any decent coach will understand that you're not going to go from zero to a hundred in one step. That's why we don't, we, you know, we build incremental improvements and changes. Um, but if you're, if you're going to struggle with that, it's not then that, Oh, there's no point trying. I should just be happy where I am. No, fuck no. If you're, if you're wanting something and your priority, like you, you are about to prioritize your health and these changes in this life. You know that you're, you've been miserable and in pain and nothing's working. You feel unhealthy. You feel sluggish. You feel lethargic. You have no motivation, not reaching out to someone in a better position. You doesn't make sense because the second your car fucks up, you reach out to a mechanic. The second, you know, you, you, if I can know your, your electrical system stops working, you reach out to an electrician. The second your body stops working and you all isn't feeling the way it should, and, you know, you can't do it yourself, like to a certain degree, once that happens, you know, you, you reach out to someone a bit more further along than you, more educated than you, or specialized in this thing. 
And you can start to prioritize and make that health change serious. And you can make that goal an actual reality. And that comes from actually taking ownership and being like, yo, don't just have to accept who I am. Like, sorry, you can accept who you are, but I don't have to stay here. I can actually get off my ass, pull my finger out and go, yep, this is going to be a hard trip. This is going to be a fucking long road. But at the same time, you then get to recognize that you've put, you know, let's say you've been eating and living this way for 20 years. You can't then expect that you're going to simply undo all that work in two weeks. And then you're a failure because you haven't done that. But the amount of people I see that bail or like, you know, they say it's a priority and then the last two, maybe two weeks, and instead of reaching out, they just start blaming everyone and saying things aren't working and it's too hard and not everyone should have to change like this. Fuck that. Just accept that you did this over 20 or 30 years time of work, consumption of calories, poor movements, sedentary lifestyle choices. And you're upset at yourself for not fixing it in three weeks or four weeks. Like fucking take ownership. Yeah, it's literally the conversation I have with uh, clients, especially when I was working in a um, uh, what do you call it? class-based gym that I was working at, uh, where you run into you know a very big selection of uh, clientele and very different backgrounds and whatnot. And, you know, a lot of them have the same thing in common. They're just gen pop people, nothing crazy. And um, it was a conversation that I had with one of the clients where you know he was about twenty, maybe thirty kilos overweight, and. <sighs> You know, he'd been training for four weeks. He'd dropped maybe two or three kilos in mm-hmm. four weeks. Um, and that was without, um, you know, removal of like carbs and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it, it wasn't like a, a dry out type scenario where you remove carbs straight away, you drop fucking five kilos because you just lost a ton of water. It wasn't yeah, one of those. Yeah. It was a, a legitimate three kilos because he was still consuming more than enough food. Um, and he sort of wasn't happy with his progress. And I'm like, man, what, what are you on about? Like, you know, you've dropped four or five centimeters around your waist. You've dropped, you know, three or four kilos in total. You, you know, they used in-body scans, which, you know, I don't know if people know what they are, but they're grossly inaccurate. But even on that, it had said his body fat had come down and, you know, all that sort of shit. Um, and even so, he wasn't happy. And I'm like, man, I'm like, why aren't you happy? Because I just thought I would have lost more. And I said, buddy, look at how old are you? I was 30-something. I'm like, how long did it take you to get to where you are? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, how long did it take you to get to, you know, your current body weight and the way you look? And he's like, oh, yeah, 20 years. And I'm like, so what makes you think you're going to lose it in four weeks, bro? <laughs> what makes you think you're going to lose it in 20 weeks? Like, it's like how this works, yeah? And yeah. Sort of the, the, the epiphany and, like, the, the look on his face, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, it's just week by week, day by day, week by week, month by month, and you'll see the change and you'll, you know, feel the change and appreciate the change and the, the mental aspect, and, you know, you feel better, you look better, life's better, you know. Yeah, anyway, it's just funny that that sort of came up, came about. It was the same sort of uh, scenario. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's legitimate too. Like people genuinely get this idea that this struggle or – you know, they, also just because they prioritize or say that the priority now is their health and things won't come up in the meantime, or they should do this drastic diet cut, or they should do this drastic change. And if they didn't do that, they're a failure and everything's wrong. But at the same time, fail to accept the fact that they've put their body through hell for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, whatever it is. And just this day deciding to change now doesn't mean it's going to be any easier or that it's going to be easy. It just means that you actually have to take some responsibility and they also accept the fact that what you've done over this time frame has to also now be undone and you have to learn from it. We have to progress your body. We have to get it back to moving correctly and eating correctly and feeling it properly. And then we also have to start recompositioning and putting muscle tissue back onto it because you probably don't have much, but at the same time, that's not, that's not a bad thing. It's not impossible. It's just that if you pull up stumps and just throw in the towel because it didn't happen in two weeks, that's not a priority. You didn't make that like a, a real priority in your life. You didn't make that actual decision. You just kind of, made a very superficial surface level, I guess, statement and failed to align with it properly and set an actual goal that is in line with who you are. And now you're just stuck to it. Like you, you did something for two or three weeks and now you've just pulled a pin. Like that's, it's, it baffles me, but yeah, it's a, it's a common occurrence. I, I think in terms of the way people explain what they want and sort of prioritize life and actually execute it. And then the second there's a hiccup or a road roadblock or anything like that, it's like, well, well, what's the point? I should just accept who I am. Well, between that and also potentially not even being educated on the, um, you know, what's involved in the goal that you have and you know, the process. So I guess on the flip side to that is, yeah, you know, potential people not, you know, taking ownership and, you know, understanding that two weeks obviously isn't going to be enough time. But also, you know, the other side to that coin is whoever's sort of guiding them, telling them and letting them know, hey, this isn't going to be easy. This isn't a quick fix. This isn't going to be, you know, 
one, you know, one week in and you're done type scenario. Like this is mm-hmm. going to be days and days for months and mm-hmm. months for, for potential years on end. And, you know, this is where we start, and, but this isn't where we finish. Like, yeah, I think that's also a big part of it. So, you know, those coaches that are taking these bigger clients and, you know, um, those that have a higher health risk uh, to, to make sure that they do their due diligence and tell them that, you know, this is going to be a, a process and a, a journey. It's going to take time, man. Like I said, like nothing but time as always. I guess, I guess a, a good point to move on from there is I guess as, as we both know it and are, are both, uh, what's the word? We're pretty used to it and I guess in the habit of doing it, but structuring your life towards the priorities that you're setting. Like it, it, that's an easy point to move on to where if you've got these massive goals or you've got these priorities now that you've set that are completely different to your life, you can't just kind of wing it. Like you can't just go back to old habits and, and sort of like, you know, old habits die hard. And if you're not going to set up or systematically implement changes in, in routine structure, your living environment to your hang around, if you can't, if you're not going to do those things, the likelihood of this massive goal is not going to occur. Like it's just not going to happen. So that, that coming down to actually structuring out how, how you want life to be and how you want life to look, because that's how you have to live in order to get to that point. Like you don't, you don't start setting up the billionaire, the billionaire like businessman schedule. Once you're a billionaire, you start setting up your schedule and your structure and your life to get there. And that's that's with any with any goal, regardless whether it's financial, business, life, health, relationships, whatever it is. But let's let's just say we're keeping it fitness related and training related. Don't don't come to me, and this, this isn't even an attack at anyone specific. But don't come to me and say that you know you're you're hundred percent committed to being a bodybuilder or, or what have you. But then uh, the boys hit me up for drinks on Friday night or, you know, we're getting on the bag on, on Saturday or, you know, knocked off early on Thursday and went on the piss. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, if we're cons- consecutively doing that and failing to track it and failing to be aware of the consequences of like that consumption, poor sleep and alcohol consumption and poor inhibition and dietary consumption after that, that doesn't tell me you want to be a body bodybuilder. And it's definitely not structuring a life that's going to support that priority and those new life endeavors and goals that you've set up. So basically what we're saying is no shoddy party for you. <laughs> I mean, this is how this works. No. <laughs> and you're not wrong. And the, the best example is obviously since we do work in the health and fitness industry, um, are those people that do want to like, in theory, want to change, you know, themselves to, to, you know, better, uh, better themselves in terms of their health and it's kind of like well once you start explaining the process and putting them through the process they just turn around and think fuck this is a lot harder than i thought and it's kind of like well yeah bro <laughs> what, what did you expect this to be like one pill and you're done it's not how this works man it's like yeah i think that's that's the difference or a big difference these days people are wanting always wanting shortcuts they're always mm-hmm. not want, they're not wanting to put in the work it's like they'll put in the work for things they truly want yeah it's just how do we make them or how do they realize or understand that this is probably something not that they truly want but something they probably truly need yeah it's like you know you start investing in yourself and putting time into yourself it's just time you get back later because you just add years to your life you don't fucking stop decreasing your life expectancy by being morbidly obese yeah and yes people don't tell me fucking health that any fucking <laughs> there is a direct correlation with size and death or age of death go look it up I was wondering at what point we get into the series where we um oh, actually get you to, you've kept saying don't stir me about it, but I mean, I was wondering what point it's going to come up. It's just pretty straightforward. It's just like fucking all cause mobility, man. Just fucking go have a look. It's, it's right there. Like the bigger you are, the more you're going to, the more chance you have of dying early. Like mm-hmm. not rocket science. Yeah. You might be a little bit bigger, hold a bit more body fat, but your blood pressure, heart rate, blood glucose and everything else might be fucking one point and it's like you know what you're one of the lucky ones but you're still gonna yep. die probably young so mm-hmm. good luck with that go enjoy <laughs> but the thing is too like let's like the other part to consider too is well we'll generalize say are you prioritizing bodybuilding as a whole are you prioritizing powerlifting as a whole or are you prioritizing health because 
the degree of changes required to make improvements in those different realms is fucking drastic. I can, I can take you from 180 kilos to 120 by simple things like increasing some fibrous veggies and decreasing consumption of like sugary sodas and replacing it with fucking diet Coke. Now that isn't a massive change, but it takes a lot of time off, like a lot of health risk off your body and increases your, uh, what's it called? Uh, longevity. Now in terms of bodybuilding, that's obviously not going to be enough. We have to start looking at things like, you know, is the, the actions you're taking in line with the intensity of the goal you're setting? Because the, there's no, there's no, okay, there's no guarantee ever of success. There's nothing we can ever do to guarantee success. However, the more accumulated days of successful, I guess, productivity and uh, in line with our daily checklist and our daily needs to occur in order to get closer to that level of success, that's something we can control. We can, we can optimize and enhance the likelihood of succeeding. Yes. In bodybuilding, there's things like genetics that, that play a part and levels of drugs you're, you're willing to do and that sort of shit over time frames. But the things that you can control that are directly related to you and the goals you've set, the intensity of that goal, and I guess just how much of a priority it is to you is going to dictate, you know, your degrees of success or failure or whether you're going to do it for over a long period of time or for two to three years because you didn't win, you quit. But I mean, everyone's priority, you've got to make a structure and make decisions that are in line with that choice, that priority that you've set, because it's literally on you. But, you know, again, that's up to how bad you want it and if it's actually what you want and if you're just sort of saying it. Yeah, well, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, it's just people, you know, humans. That's what we have to deal with. How how would you say? Um, I mean, we're busy. I mean, that's that's a that's a, a pretty no brainer. How important would you say your structure and schedule and actually setting out your day is to you across the week, across the day, across the month, whatever it is, however you yeah, do it? I, I'm, I'm fairly fortunate. Oh, maybe not fortunate. I think it's just one of those things since I was a kid. I've always been regimented. My life doesn't really function without a routine or regimen. Mm-hmm. If it goes off routine, I tend to get very grumpy very fast. Yeah. Um, and literally my day is based around my training. So Usually first thing in the morning, like I'll, I'll be training. So I get it out of the way. But, um, mm-hmm. I, I'm useless training in the afternoon or at night. Like unless it's an upper body session where like no one cares. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> I can get away with it. But, you know, when I'm training, especially in my growth phases, when I'm in a heavy leg session, for those that would know, getting on a Cybex hack squat and yeah. pushing, pushing that shit, you need to go. Sometimes you just need to go to some places and I'm not doing that late. And I, I'm not doing that uh, after a stressful day. So yeah, I'd rather have that as my stress, my first form of stress for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, continue on from there. And the thing is, like, if I have a bad workout, it doesn't bother me too much. It's very rare that I have a bad workout because, you know, one exercise I might fuck up on, but then there's another exercise I'm going to make up for it anyways. So, yeah. Um, I guess it's just a, an internal perspective. Um, but yeah, my, my day is based around my training, man. That's pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm very regimented. It's like training and then work and then, you know, what else needs to be done. But yeah. That's, that's, that's how I work for it. It's just always and very rarely do I change anything to do with that. So like people want to go get breakfast and stuff. And it's like, man, honestly, it's, it's probably a little bit more um, drastic than anything, but it's like people want to do shit for my birthday or if you know, my best mates yeah. have birthdays and shit. I'm just like, you know what? Like, cool. Like, I'll definitely catch up with you and see you, but it's like, I'm still going to go train first. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll come do what I want to do. So, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, and, it's it's weird because living such structure is often mocked, but then also getting the results of that is often mocked. Like, oh, you you've got it easy. Like, you know, you're lucky, or you got this success, or whatever it is. You know, you can you have the time to do this, but at the same time, you've structured and regimented a, a way of life that allows you not allows you, it optimizes you the time to get in and do these things. And yeah. that's that's the the degree of difference that that frustrates me is like when general general society will say, oh, you know, I don't have the time to train. I don't have the time to meal prep and make food and stuff. Uh, not having to go at anyone in particular. Like there are definitely times where life comes up, but at the same time, if you're then also out, you know, four of the seven days of the week at night and you're not up in the morning training to make up for that, or you're not optimizing like your routine at home to make sure that you're scheduled and you're booked in, you've got everything, like every minute's kind of like spare minutes taken count for. So you can cook and, you know, get to work on time and get your seven hours sleep and recover properly and still have a bit of a social life. If you aren't doing that, well, then it's not that you don't have the time It's that you're not prioritizing making the time. You're not prioritizing setting a structure and a schedule and something to live by because that's where results are found. Like 
anyone that's read Atomic Habits would understand that your success is not found in some one massive activity that's, you know, instantly done in a week's time. Therefore, now you've got success. Success happens over and over and over every single day, making the right decisions and the right choices consistently and developing habits that lead to the outcome you're chasing. So if you're, if you're trying to talk about how bad you want success or how bad you want to get these results of your training or nutrition or like changing your life, if you're not structuring that and setting that up, I mean, the chances of it happening are fuck all to none. And it's just, you're hoping for a fluke. Great. Like literally, uh, I don't disagree at all because it's kind of how we both live our lives, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I, like I said, you know, I went out for a mate's birthday, oh, I think it was like two weekends ago. Every single person there asked if I was going to drink. I just said, no, like it's not a big deal. Like they're sort of used to me now that I don't drink that once that boundary sort of set. Um, but at the same time, it's also on me to set that boundary. If I'm not going to set that boundary and I just give in because people ask, don't give me some peer pressure shit. Like, yes, social pressures exist, but at the same time, you're a consciously thinking human. You can say no. You can say, you know what? I might have a Pepsi Max instead. Or, you know, start small, small choices. Like, let's say you are a big drinker, big socialize, you go out. Go from drinking cocktails to a lemon lime vodka or a vodka soda or something like that. Like start making smaller incremental choices. And then you get to the point where I'll only have one or instead of five, or I might have two instead of five. Then you go, I'm going to drink tonight. And now you've set some boundaries up. You've set some choices up that actually align with the priorities that you've set. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. so, you know, you do what most responsible people do and you don't drink that often. And then when you do, you go hard. <laughs> <laughs> Binge that shit. That work Christmas party where you're going to do the most embarrassing shit. That's when it's time to let loose, Karen. That's where you should and do the most that, cocaine. You know, well, I mean, I was just going to go with alcohol, but sure, let's let's do that too. Hey, we don't get why Christmas is in Australia. You just have to make them. <laughs> the Bros with Brains Christmas party coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> coming to my nostrils. <laughs> We're kidding, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> as, as always, we need to preface with don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, you're, like, you're not wrong. A lot of people, like I said, they feel like they have, a lot of people have their heart in the right place and they, yeah. they have their their want for, for betterment, I guess, you know, bettering themselves, whether that be their health and every other aspect, right? But once they see the work that potentially needs to be put into place, mm -hmm. they don't want to do it anymore because it doesn't come as fast. The, the results aren't as quick. So it's like, you know, it's not as gratifying. So it's like, I guess as coaches, how do you make that result? I guess, how do you make, you know, if you're doing weekly check-ins and all that sort of stuff, how do you make it gratifying? And from a coach's perspective, it's kind of like, you know, start blowing up um, the small things and, you know, making sure that they understand how important that, that change is. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know the client loses half, half a kilo every week for two for three months. It's just kind of like, you know, you've lost six kilos, man. It's like, fuck, like, yeah, dude, that, that's huge. Like, that's that, that's insane but you know you don't see that week to week but you see yes. that after after the initial 12 weeks and you're like yep. man you know, it's mad you know so you, you blow these things up so it's like when you get to a check-in it's like fucking like i've got clients going through growth phases and stuff like that and it's just like man we put on 400 grams but we've put on 400 grams every freaking week it's like yes like, yeah this is, this is what we're looking for like you know we go through the photos and it's kind of like oh look, we haven't seen we can't see from last week to this week but let's go back six weeks oh fuck, look at the difference there you're like fuck, yeah there you go like you know what i mean it's just using your brain as a coach to really make the client, you know, who doesn't feel like they're doing well. Like I had a message from a fucking client for them. She's probably going to this podcast. So I'm definitely not going to name it, but man, I was just like, bro, if this is what you're sending me now, I'm just like, dude, I, like I, I love you, but I feel sorry for you. She was like, oh, what did she say? Uh, where is it? I'm just finding it on my phone. Um, you're a piece of shit, Scaffy, and I hate you. That's what she said. Getting your video, because I do Loom videos, because, you know, that's just how we roll. My favorite part of the week makes me feel like I'm achieving something, even when I don't feel like I am. So thank you for being a bit of positivity I need every Wednesday. And I'm like, my reply was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, your week should not be, the best part of your week should not be the four or five minute video that I send you. Like, <laughs> what can we do to improve this? <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck me, like... Man, yeah. like I appreciate the sentiment and I appreciate the comment, but like, fuck, like, no. <laughs> yeah, we need yeah, to find one, things that are better for you, man. One of my one of my changes I included in um in in my uh, weekly check in form is is getting clients to recognize their their weekly achievements. So I was like, so one of the one of the uh, two things that I've gone there is um you know, what's what's something this week that you're proud of from training, and what's something this week you're proud of from life. So what's some other things that you're, that you're doing that you're proud of. So they actually, they're forced to start recognizing 
good wins for themselves and I don't need to tell them. And then I tell them the other wins, you know, that we'll go through the weight changes or the recomposition photos to photos. Like, you know, you don't have to be the one to make the comparisons of the photos. I can go back and see them like, look, fucking two weeks, you're down four kilos. Here's where you're almost able to start tucking in your stomach. You're able to do this and this sort of shit. So, you know, we can amp them up as I was told in exercise. So like we can't build motivation for a client or a, a patient, but we can foster it. So with the right language, and this is where like tools like motivational interviewing comes into it, is using the right language is a fucking power as a coach because it's not just about them paying you money. It's actually about communicating, conversing with them, getting to understand that they're doing a big thing and it requires effort each week and they're getting towards it and actually be able to foster that, that communication and sort of like, you know, you are making massive changes. You are setting up structures and routines and changing your habits and your lifestyles. And each week we're learning something new for you to build off. And these are successes and these are wins that we need to take note of. And on top of that, you tell me what you notice. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what's a win this week that isn't just about, um, you know, the weight on the scale or the fucking the gym room floor and stuff like that. Like, you know, this week I, as an example, no one sort of said this yet, but you know, it might be, you know, this week I felt more confident to wear jeans or I felt more confident to wear a dress or something like that. And it's like, what's something non-related that you see as a win for you for the week? So it's like, you're celebrating yourself as well as me encouraging you. Yeah, 100%. And it's so simple for coaches as well. Just, you know, use positive language. And yeah. it, it makes such a difference for your clients. And I noticed that from, you know, having the previous coaches that I've had, you know, short of like Ben Mack being the most positive person on the planet. Um, even when, you know, he like you, you fail a one RM or like a three RM and then you crush your neck and shit. It's just like, yeah, man, like you did so well. It's like, oh, I did. <laughs> really died. Thanks. Fucking spot on though. <laughs> That, thanks, bro. Like, I appreciate you. I love you all. But, you know, there are those coaches that will, and again, more more realism and realistic coaches where I think I, I'd call myself a more realistic coach and it's like finding a happy blend for the client. And it's like, yeah. you know, you celebrate the wins and, you know, you, you pick apart where the client may have not gone wrong but may have just missed the mark, I guess, for yeah. the week. But you do it in like a positive sense. It's kind of like, okay, this is where we sort of, you know, fell down a little bit. Or, yeah. But, you know, this is how we're going to rectify it for this week. And it's kind of like you, you're pointing out the problem, but you're giving yeah. a solution, not just pointing out the problem and going like, yeah. we're going to do exactly what we did last time. You just do it again. Yeah. Which, again, don't get me wrong, sometimes you need to because sometimes clients are, you know, clients are clients. Like, I get it. Yeah. But most of the time, you know, you do need to be that positive uh, reinforcement for that client and just be like, man, like, you know, you're doing so well here, here, and here. Like, we need to look at this part now and bring this up because you're doing everything yeah. else so well. Like, you're leaving this one behind. Like, come on, man. You know what I mean? It's just being positive with that with the client, and you get messages like that, and hopefully, you're not the best part of their week either. So, <laughs> I mean, and and one of the one of the coolest things I ever heard from Jordan Peterson was that like, um, you know, if you're if you set a structure, if you set a structure, you set a plan. This is an example. If you set a routine, you set a structure who at least you have something you're aiming for. So who cares if it's, if you only adhere to it by 50% next week, we aim for 51%. And that's how I look at progression as a coach. If I've got a client who's got these massive goals and you know, it's scary as fuck to you and you're struggling to understand how we're going to get there. Awesome. Now I don't expect you to be a hundred percent. Yes. I want you to be a hundred percent. I mean, that'd be the perfect client. If you're a hundred percent every week, I mean, you know, you've got your, your reps are standardized, your exhaustion hits where we want it to your successful exercise selection matches, what we've written down, your nutrition's on point. That's great. But if you're getting someone who's coming in at you know 50% accuracy that, that week or 52%, they had a shit week and you aren't, you aren't asking about family issues, you aren't asking about stress or sleep or you know, work's been hard and busy, whatever. If you're, you know, if you're getting someone who's coming in at 50%, the next week isn't, hey, let's go fucking 100% or nothing. It's, well, how do we get to your 51? How do we get you 52? What, you know, are you consistently hitting 50%? Well, then let's work on some small changes that will get to 55, 56. And then you celebrate those wins and they're like, cool, I can do 56. Now we go to 60. Now we go to 65. Now you've got a client who's consistently pushing at 80%, 90% instead of being pissed off they didn't get 100% for one week and then they quit. Yeah, and it's like, you know, people say like that 1% better, you know, every day if you can. And if you're doing that, it's 365% better every, you know, an entire year. It's like, fuck, like, we didn't get it that way. Like, man. Yeah. You can get half of that if you're doing fucking quiet. Yeah. You know, like. And that sounds, that sounds small, but if you were a fucking investor and you put $1,000 into a share and you got a 365% return after in one year, you fucking <laughs> sign me up. Sweet. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like you know back yourselves and when i, I think of maybe a lot of the, the listeners don't understand like we ourselves are human as well like myself and ben we have these moments it's like i know myself 
you know, I've had those many times where that many times where I've just like fallen off the mark and just, you know, but at the same time, I've always been honest with my coach. And that's probably another yeah. big thing as well. When you fall down, tell your coach, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that is what we do. Like it's okay. You're not letting us down. You're not doing anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah. The more data and the more uh, things that we know and can learn about you as a person, the better mm -hmm. we can implement tools for you to help mm -hmm. you succeed. But if you have like a, a cheeky binge there when you have a packet of Tim Tams when you're not meant to, I'm not saying that was me one time because it was me every day for <laughs> two years, but that's fine. Um, you know, like tell us. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, <laughs> the amount of times I used to tell my coach Joe, I'm just like, especially in a growth phase, well, again, I can get away with it, but you're not supposed to eat a packet of Tim Tams at night. I was doing it literally every night for like five, six nights. So, yeah, you're like, supposed to do two. Yeah, seven, exactly. Seven eleven, so, seven uh, eleven offers two for twelve bucks. Yeah, exactly. I could, two for twelve bucks for Tim Tams. Man, you get ripped off. Go to Coles. They're like fucking two for four. Yeah, but like, if it's after hours and you're hungry, and you go to Coles. You go to Seven yeah, Eleven. They're open. Don't be, just be better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> be be prepared. Yeah, right. And this is why Ben has no money because he spends twelve dollars on two packs of Tim Tams. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna talk about Ben's budget now. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's just let the let your coach know. Like it's okay to fall down, backpedal, like. That's normal. You're human, just like us. We've been there. We've done that. And the reason why we're helping you is because we've been in your position and gone and seeked help, <laughs> which is what you're doing. And then especially if you're a coach yeah. who's also a client, like again, most of us, um, tell your coach and then you're yeah. going to have your clients do it to you. And it's just this like cyclical effect of like going around and around but the circle. It's, just, it's really cool. On the side of that, if you're a coach who's making someone feel guilty for a slip up, fuck you. Fuck oh, yeah, you because true. you make us all look bad and you're a piece of shit letting it like allowing a client to fuck up and then encouraging them to understand why that sort of that, that lapse or that mistake happened and then building off it is how you build self-efficacy and autonomy. And in autonomy, you, you develop self-determination and determinate self-determination, you develop motivation. So if you're someone who's trying to improve someone's like performance or adherence and you're punishing them for a fuck up or a, a slip up or a, a lapse in judgment or, you know, a poor food choice because they won't have calories or whatever, you're, de you're developing a problem with their relationship towards coaching and understanding nutrition and training. And that's going to be something we have to fix down the track because you're shit. And so it leads into our debates about eating disorders. Yes. Fucking yes. Go back <laughs> three weeks and listen to that. Cause fuck you. You're the cause of that. Not us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Ben's a bit wild up here. Just uh, <laughs> you guys, but I'm also getting excited. So um, Can't have my reaction, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I said, Tell your coach. It's just it's not not complicated. Again, find a lot of clients. I had I actually had a, last week a client that I've had for two years. But more so in person, we've just transitioned to online and just turned around and gone, oh, I'm like, you didn't do your check-in, man. What's going on? Like, you haven't missed one yet. He goes, I just had a shit week. I'm like, so when you do your check-in? <laughs> it's like, oh, I was there to check in. I'm like, still tell me if you had a shit week because I need to see what's going on so I can, you know, potentially help fix it. Like, yeah, you're you know, all the adult, don't get me wrong. Um, like, you know, you're an old guy. Like, I know that you know your shit, but still, like, you're paying me for a service. So, yeah, you, you wouldn't pay, you, you wouldn't pay for, you wouldn't pay for a physio or something and just not go because I had a bad week. So I didn't go to a physio, but you've already paid them. Like, yeah. you fucking turn it up and get in that session. You turn it up and yeah, get in that, that so. money's worth. It's like, let, let me do my job. Yeah. If, if at best I can give you some advice to improve things, especially like, you know, if you've had a shit week of training, maybe more of my, uh, like, psychological assistance is the benefit to having a coach. You can then use me to ask questions or we can, you know, look at stress management or lifestyle management and go, all right, where did you slip up? Or, you know, what, what made you feel this way? Or what was the trigger? And we can dive into that and then uncover what may have caused it. And that doesn't happen again. And then you get a better week of training. So stress management, life management goes hand in hand with performance management. Exactly right. And again, we're going to have these acute bouts, but as long as they're only acute and they're not happening, you know, two or three weeks in a row, then we're good. Yeah, Exactly. I mean that that again which we'll is, go back to the what we're trying to which is what we're trying to avoid and by the way we tell you check in with us still even if you do have a bad week so we can avoid having it again the following week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's ones where it's like, oh, I had one bad day, so I may as well throw out the week and never had two weeks and now I've just had a shit month. Like, no, we don't need to we don't need to get stuck there. Um and that that kind of all comes back to like like setting up structure and routine, like minimizing the chance of those lapses happening and those situations happening comes from routine and habit and structure, a schedule and a system. So getting those systems in place, like I can tell you right now, it's hard to fucking pound down two tubs of ice cream or like three packets of Tim Tams if they're not in your house. So like, that's just, a, this is one of those things like the, especially as a general, just a gen pop client, if you're general 
priority is to improve life or just reduce you know, some health risks and stuff like that. You don't have to scrap everything, but just having as optimal a situation as possible is the best place to be. Well, yeah. I mean, who would have thought, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Shocking okay. stuff. It's, just, it's the same old conversation, people. Come on. <laughs> well, mate, we've been rambling on a little while now. As always. Um, as always. Let's see what shit we have to talk. We've got some... Uh, you got questions? You get questions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. You know, I drink my, my gulp of water. Yeah, I've got a couple. Sweet. Uh, ooh. All right, so we're going to Q&A. Um, I've got a bit more of a biochem one for you. For a bit of physiology you'll enjoy. This should be fun. Uh, how do you cater for female clients with PCOS protocol-wise with regards to test and insulin or um, AAS? Sorry, I was thinking of the acronym there like an idiot. Okay, so say the same question again. <laughs> in, in English this time, please. Um, Por no lo dos? <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, how do you cater for female clients with PCOS protocol-wise? Okay, so it's PCOS protocol-wise. So uh, the, it really depends on the severity of the PCOS and, you know, what's going on. So PCOS being a two-part component, we have... Um, usually higher testosterone levels or associated testosterone levels. Um, and then we also need to do ultrasounds of the ovaries to see what's going on there and if we're having any growths. Um, and that's how they sort of determine. So you do need both the blood test as well as the actual ultrasound to say or confirm that you do have it. Um, mm-hmm. I actually have a podcast coming out on that, funnily enough. Um, next week. Next week. Oh, there you go. Um, we're going to discuss PCOS and endometriosis, I think, and a few other things like that and protocols that we can do. But there are things that you can take that, again, have to be recommended by a doctor. Um, things like metformin, uh, very, like great for insulin sensitivity. Um, again, not always the problem. Usually it's just one of those things where we do need to look at training and like sort of nutrition practices. You can take some of the counter supplements, things like iron and um, calcium. I want to say it's something. I want to say it's iodine, but can't remember off the top of my head to be honest. Um, but yeah, like just because you have PCOS doesn't mean you're limited in what you can do. Yeah. In terms of training, it's not like it, it's, it's a limiting factor. It's like when you know um, girls get really bad, or really painful menses or you know periods. Um, it's like, yeah, that's that's the limiting factor, and it's so acute for that period of time. And then as soon as you're done, like, cool, you can train again. It's kind of like you, you don't have unless you you having really bad pains and that sort of stuff. Um, PCOS doesn't really limit you. Uh, if anything, if you have the high testosterone level, like it's almost better for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Especially if you're hey, training, ladies. Pain. Well, if you're a, you know, if you're a pal, if you're a physique based client, it's kind of handy. <laughs> in that aspect. You have a, a, what we call a natural advantage. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's the positive side to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, th- there was a, there is a downside in that it can make things more difficult when it comes to, you know, losing weight and losing body fat. Um, again, it just depends on the severity of it uh, and it's, you know, person dependent. But a lot of the time, a lot of the time, a lot of people will go like low carb for mm-hmm. um, girls with PCOS, and it was a thing way back. It's not really supported anymore by the evidence. Um, it's just really like any other. You treat it like any other case in terms of insulin sensitivity. It's just like diet and train. Um, that's the sort of general consensus. But again, person dependent, and if there is whoever's asking if if it is a a real problem, just you know, jump on my Instagram page and hit a consult and we'll just uh, have a chat in 60 minutes and ask me over everything you want. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. That's your neck of the woods, mate, so I'm leaving that alone. It's all yours. Yeah, no, fair. It's a tricky one. Uh, it, it can be limiting for people because it can also be very scary to hear. It's like, oh, you've got something. And mm-hmm. It's kind of like, it's not a bad thing. And like, there are many positives, so I guess, to PCOS in that from a performance side of things, the only, I guess the real limiting thing is also is for, you know, um, procreation. So like it makes it, it can make it more difficult to conceive and that sort of stuff. So yeah, that side of things like mm, sucks, 
But again, me being the bro that I am, it's like, yes, you got PCOS, high testosterone levels, let's get you fucking jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Next six months, the gross phase. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm like, whoops, I forgot about that other side of things, but yeah, my bad. Fair. Um, all right. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll go with a funny one. Um, fuck, marry, kill. Reed Richards, the Punisher, Judge Dredd. Reed Richards, the Punisher, Judge Dredd. Thick. Um, well, I'm marrying the fuck out of Reed Richards because that dude's rich. Yeah, and he's real smart. Yeah, if you know your Marvel guys, you got some coin and he can stretch. So imagine he can do some things. Yeah, he can reach places nobody can. <laughs> <laughs> He'd do some crazy shit. Yeah, it's like, good luck killing the Punisher. Like, yeah. The dude's the master of killing. So I feel like you'd be um you feel like you'd be pretty, pretty um bit of a freak too. So you're gonna get some pretty um you're gonna get a good fuck out of that. Yeah, so you're probably gonna bang the Punisher. Yeah. Judge Dredd, let's just judge Dredd like he's not. No. Yeah, and we, hold on. Are we talking Stallone Dredd or are we talking, what was it, new dude's name? Uh, new Dredd. Oh, what's his name? I don't yeah. it was a new, new Dredd name. That's a good question. I can't remember the actor. Yeah, I can't remember the actor's name. Shall we do this? Yes. Jamie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> judge Dredd. Uh, 2012. What was his name? Oh, God, there's a recent one. Uh, Carl Urban, that's it. Carl, that's right. God, that's fucking loser. How did I forget that? Yeah, so are uh, we talking about Carl Urban or like Stallone Dread? Because I feel like Stallone's Dread was much more badass than Carl Urban. Don't get me wrong, Carl Urban was sick of his Dread. I'm not saying yeah. he wasn't. But Stallone was on another level. Yeah, he had that uh, that droopy voice. That, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, it was, it's it's the chin for me that does yeah. it outside. Yeah, the Stallone <laughs> chin that going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Between Punisher and Dread, you gotta fucking kill one go. Because we all know we're married Reed because he's rich. Yeah, look, I'm gonna fuck the Punisher. And <laughs> Dredd. I'm gonna have a better chance of killing Dread than I have the Punisher, I reckon. Yeah, that's a fair cop. That's a fair cop. All right, what do you got? I got a fuck married kill powerlifting clients, bodybuilding clients, or gen pop clients. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about to narrow our markets down. <laughs> um, look. I'm probably going to shoot, kill all my powerlifting clients. I'm not going to lie. No, I'm they're not. They're not too bad. Most of them are actually moving on to like physique. The good thing, actually, I'm besides before we get into this, I'm actually really lucky. My powerlifting clients do understand the importance of actually physique development and actual muscle building when it comes to their. What do you mean systems. improving muscle recruitment and building hypertrophy is actually a good thing? Yeah, they've got a really good coach, so um, <laughs> you know he kind he kind he kind of knows something about the industry when it comes to that sort of stuff. So I'm lucky in that aspect. But is there another coach that works for them, or are you still talking about you? <laughs> just, just, just me, bro. <laughs> yeah. But if we go to like a, a general consensus, powerlifting clients, I'm killing them all. Um, <laughs> just, just going to be SBD every day, every week for twelve years. Yeah, I'm probably going to marry bodybuilding clients just because we can train together, we eat together, they get the lifestyle. Yeah, you know, like. They want to be in bed when I want to be in bed. They don't want to be in bed when I don't want to be in bed when you're severely yeah. hiding and you have no libido. Like these things, it's okay. Yeah. And then gen pop clients. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to fuck my gen pop clients. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in line with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of the more logical approach. I guess, I guess you call them, I guess if you, if you call them uh, bro powerlifters, maybe more along the lines of those guys going yeah. that Old school fucking, oh, my coach told me to do some bicep curls and some fucking uh, chest flies. Nah, get out. Well, yeah, right. It's kind of like, man, let's just use the basics because you're gen pop. Yep. Life easier. Actually, I do have another one. Fuck, Mary kill. Happy mm-hmm. Gilmore, little Nikki, and <laughs> Bobby Boucher. Oh, yes. My three favorite fucking Adam Sandler movies. Interesting one. I like that one. It's a good yeah, that's good. Someone, someone really threw a curveball there. Well done. Um, so we got Happy Gilmore, Bobby Boucher, and Little Nicky. Mm. I mean, I think I'm gonna bang Little Nicky. <laughs> I love Little Nicky. It's such a good movie. It's so good. <laughs> Papa's chicken is the shit. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can do it. Bite his fucking head off. <laughs> the bat. <laughs> the scene when he's like, he like he learned to fly and he flies up and there's like he looks in the wrong room and he's like, yeah. hey, <laughs> he's rubbing his nipples. 
<laughs> now the best part is his mom. <laughs> oh yeah, like, the dad's oh. all yeah, dad's all her shit, <laughs> and then his mom's what's her face. Reese, Reese with a spoon, <laughs> and then uh, old mate, uh, what's his name? Um, it's all in the hips, baby. <laughs> He's just up there. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm a bang little Nikki. I'm probably gonna kill Bobby Boucher. I mean, it's a hard one. Yeah, but Bobby, like Bobby, as much as I love him, he's real dumb. So it's like I can't, like I can't be with that. Yeah, I mean, Happy Gilmore did win, so it's got a bit of money behind him. There you go, done. I like when things come together. <laughs> <laughs> I like when these hypothetical kill fuck scenarios come together. Yeah, plan. It's like at the eighteen. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> it's like a uh, fuck, they're good shows. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much in line with that. What? Oh, yeah. uh, wait, fucking which one's Bobby Boucher again? Seriously, the water boy. That's right. God damn it. Yeah, I know. Like, that wasn't Happy Gilmore. I mean, Billy Madison. Um, <laughs> it's too old. He's spending my Coca Cola. <laughs> oh, God. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on. I'll say the same as you. I've got one other one, but it's literally, it's like I, I wrote, what was it? The question page was Fuck, Mary kill, training, nutrition, PDs, ask away. And someone's just literally written PDs. <laughs> so I, I don't know how to answer that one. So pens are a really it. fun lolly system dispenser um you can get them from kmart or coles yeah it's kind of like what what do, what do we want to know about pds they work <laughs> we need we need details here guys they um very bad right. side effects <laughs> <laughs> or very fun side effects well yeah what is the what is the best tip you have received when it comes to tracking Tracking what? Just tracking. We'll say food. <laughs> the best tip I've received while tracking food. Actually, you know what? I they think I've actually received it. I'm pretty sure I have a self-taught when it comes to using my fitness pal, but it was one of the first things that came out and was a thing. Um I'm trying to think who taught me to use my fitness pal. I don't think anyone actually ever taught me. It was just one of those self-taught think, things, man. I think one of the best pieces I got was it's better to be consistently inconsistent than to try and make up like every other day and just sort of wing it. So like, mm-hmm. if you, if you're going in that, in that regards, what I mean there is if you're going to pick, like, say you pick foods and you can't be certain or, or what have you, or you can't be hundred percent spot on and you made some slight inconsistencies in terms of referencing nut tab or referencing a certain food selection or like packet. If, if you're still making improvements and making change on that wrong selection, then just be consistent with that. I mean, slowly work over time to get better at it. But if you're still making progress on the wrong, uh, the wrong, the wrong choice, it at least is giving you a general guideline of where you're sitting. So it's yeah. better to have something to aim for than nothing. And just even if it's slightly inaccurate and you'll consistently be picking that one, it means you're still like selecting something consistently. That's the exact same value every time. And you can move on from there. Yeah. I think, I think maybe the best tip I got was when you, Using or picking foods on my fitness pal, just make sure or try and make sure they have the green tick next to them. Fair, sure. yeah. I think that was the, the tip that's kind of said, you know, if you're going to like look for a Nando's wrap, try and find the one with the green tick. <laughs> yeah, um, um, yeah, don't just don't just pick something that's got uh like zero calories. Oh, that looks like it fits. I'm going to track that. It doesn't yeah. work that way. We yeah, know, actually, I guess, the, I guess I do have a tip then. Oh, maybe I don't know if I was told this or if it's something that I applied. It's probably something I got told, but I don't remember. Told me. I'll take credit for it. Uh, well, I, I mean, honestly, I know that I'm self-taught when it comes to my fitness pal, so it's like I've never like gone through. I just remember downloading the app way back when and started playing with it, and just like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Um, when you're going out and you're going to have burgers and stuff like that, always pick like you know when you're going to a custom burger place, not mm-hmm. a joint, uh, commercial place, or not commercial place, not a a chain restaurant and that sort of yeah. stuff. Always pick the worst one to compare it to. So it's like if you're going to have, you know, a, a burger that's at a, a pub or something like that, you know, always pick like a Macca's Big Mac or something like that that's got the most calories, the most yeah. macros, the shittest everything. That way, if you again trying to track and you're in a deficit, you're still probably going to be in a deficit because that burger is probably going to be nowhere near as bad or as calorie dense as that Macca's burger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like always trying to pick the most, um, you know, the worst one in terms of calories and macros. Um, 
a personal, just a side note, when it comes to my fitness pal, I hate when people come to me and say I'm under my calories or over my calories, but I'm close to my macros. It's like, yeah, there's a reason for it. People that input things on my fitness pal are very special people and don't understand how to put things in my fitness pal most of the time. Mm-hmm. So always use the nutrient page and just check your macros. Don't yeah. worry about the calories themselves. If you're close enough on your macros or you're getting into your macros, you're sweet. If you're going over and under, then at least you're very well aware. Don't yeah. worry about the calories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one other good one is like, if you follow Dalton, um, he always encourages or starts using a 20% uh, tax on food. So yeah, yeah, if you're eating out and things like that, just in context here, you can't control what a chef uses. You can't control cooking methods, oils, fats, butters, um, seasoning, sauces. You, You very rarely have control over that. So generally the consensus is that you should assume overuse rather than underuse because a chef wants things to taste good. They don't care your dieting. So just account for that by adding an extra 20% to total calories. Um, and generally yeah, just diverse that across the nutrients. So just basically an easy way to do that might be 1.2%, uh, sorry, 1.2 servings. So if you know you've got a burger or something on there that is one serving, um, multiply it by 1.2. So you're getting at least a 20% increase in calorie intake. Exactly right. Always better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, exactly. And that's all I've got, my dude. Um, let's see if I have any more. Right, right. Um, nah, the rest of them are kind of crap. So we'll leave it there. <laughs> Fair enough. That's it from me, my friend. Nice, easy one tonight because we are recording much later than usual. Yes, the brain is a little bit fried, but, you know, we still like to be consistent and make sure you guys get your day a weekly dose of us. Yes, metaphorically and realistically. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, uh, what's been going on? What's the house coming out? Doing anything um, fancy shit? Man, I actually got um, I've got a really cool uh, thing going on with the fit stop at the moment. So we'll be following up with the um, the guys at week three of the challenge. See how the, the goals the goals went there. Um, I've got a, it's actually pretty cool. I've got a nice little social study going. I've got a control group and I've got non control groups. So um, actually creates a decent decent population sample to choose from in terms of um, people training with a much more in-depth goal that I've helped them or that my book and services help them use um, versus the ones who are just sort of doing it for their, their six week challenge with, you know, I want to lose five kilos, what have you. So yeah. just being out, being aware of that, any changes I can make and any improvements I can make, and then I'll start leveraging that sort of system and, and sort of seeing, you know, if it's, if it's something that these sort of franchises and models can actually incorporate. Um, I mean, overall it just means like, yeah, it sounds like I'm pushing it for me, but uh, you know, even gen pop clients can have bigger goals for themselves. It doesn't just have to be a five week, five kilos a week or something like that. So a five kilo loss or something like that. Like you can generally get a lot more out of yourself if you actually know what it is you want. So having a, having a population uh, sample that I can just sort of keep an eye over and see how they go. Um, you know, I'll do a three week check-in, I'll do a six week check-in and, and we'll go from there. And I'm hopefully, um, you know, uni's coming towards the end. So I'm, um, once uni's done, I'll um I'll start building out this mentorship that I want to build and put together and, and start getting people to um really fuck up life in a good way. Yes. Well, hopefully it's a good way. Though. Yeah, hopefully it's a good way. Hopefully it'll ruin your life. It's like whoops, back to the Let me know if I did. <laughs> Straight <laughs> Actually, back. Probably don't, so say, don't, don't let him know if you if you did. <laughs> I'd appreciate the feedback. I don't like to do things wrong. <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it for good. me, man. That's it. Just same old shit and just working away. Yeah, it feels that's exactly what's going on. But anyway, thank you, good sir, for jumping on as always. All right, mate. Thanks for the uh, adjustment, um, the stuff around to our usual schedule. Yeah, true. When I hate my routine gets out. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks as always to the listeners. And again, if you do have any suggestions, questions, anything you want to ask or know about, please DM one of us or throw it in the question box. I did order us a little uh, present, so this should be fun if it went once again. Oh, did you actually get it? Yeah, bro, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> oh, fuck yes. <laughs> so if the, client, if, if the person listening does, because I got it sent to me from one of our listeners, so they're like, you need oh, this for your, they, they need this for your podcast. And, you know, yes. um, I'm not going to lie, I bought it straight away, so it should be fun. So oh. when that comes in, it's going to be a very, very interesting segment to come to this podcast. <laughs> that joke we made about two girls, one cup? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> yes, it's like we found a way to show you, Natkin. 
that um, web link is still hidden there somewhere. We found yeah. it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that should be fun for hopefully it comes in by next week, but OzPost and Melbourne. So who knows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think I've got a pair of shoes arriving from America before something could reach Melbourne. Hundred <laughs> percent. I think I'm hoping they're based in Melbourne, but I have no idea. They got sent out today, so Sweet. let's see when they come in. Hopefully, by fun next shit. Week's podcast. Fun should be fun. Shit. All right, guys and girls, thanks for tuning in. We are Outskies. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>